this little blue marble floating in space, brimming with life unique to its own. We call it home. Everywhere you look, plants and creatures, those we know of and those that hide in the shadow, each of us in the grace of Mother Nature. In the entire history of humankind and astronomy, we have been under the impression that the unparalleled beauty of our hospitable planet was unique to our own. Because of our little understanding of the infinite expanse of the universe, we have believed that the Earth is one of one. And maybe, perhaps, it is. But more than likely, it is not. The unfortunate reality is that our Earth will not and cannot live forever. We are bound for a definitive end. It may be a hundred million years from now, but the end will come for the Earth just as it will for each one of us. So what do we do? Lay down and accept defeat? No, we humans are far more stubborn than that. Our answers lie in the stars above. Thanks to the efforts of the Kepler telescope, we have found amazing discoveries that will change everything. An Earth 2.0 Kepler Launched in 2009 and now retired after seven and a half years of service, the Kepler telescope was designed with its primary mission being to search for new planets. It was one of a few super telescopes that could see far beyond the limitations of traditional telescopes. During its mission, the telescope was able to find over 4,000 exoplanets outside our solar system. It's thanks to the Kepler that we've been exposed to a whole new world of astronomical discovery. However, it's important to note that a greater majority of those discovered planets wouldn't be quite as kind to us as Earth has been. The exoplanet hunter has observed hundreds of thousands of stars and discovered thousands of exoplanets during its lifetime. As part of NASA's discovery program, Kepler's job was to constantly scan a fixed patch of sky within our Milky Way galaxy to find planetary systems or exoplanets that have conditions that are suitable for life to develop. Given how fragile the human body can be in hostile conditions, scientists have come up with a set of parameters for Earth 2.0. Not saying that Earth 2.0 has to be exactly like our current planet, with the yellow sun, the moon, the atmosphere, but it has to be at least fairly similar. According to those parameters, the perfect superhabitable planet would orbit around a K-dwarf star, a relatively small star that's slightly cooler than our sun. K-stars are orange-red dwarfs, and though they don't sound as ideal for life as our Sun, they do have one significant advantage. Their lifetimes are anywhere between 20 and 70 billion years. So, if life started on a planet orbiting a K-dwarf star, it would have a longer time to evolve than it does on Earth. Scientists theorize that a big reason that life appears to be so incredibly rare is that it simply does not have the time to cultivate. For example, while we have several hundred million years left before the Sun expands and overheats Earth, from an evolutionary standpoint, if it took an extra 10% longer for conscious life to evolve on Earth, it wouldn't have evolved at all. The world would have been destroyed by then. And for that same reason, older planets would also be better. But not too old, of course. Eventually, they would exhaust their interior geothermal heat and lose their protective geomagnetic fields. So ideally, the planet would have to be 5 billion to 8 billion years old. It would also have to be 10% larger than Earth to allow more habitable areas. Also, if a planet is bigger than Earth, radioactive decay in the planet's interior would last longer to provide heat, and the stronger gravity would help the planet to retain its atmosphere longer. We would also need a planet that's ideally about 9 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius warmer than Earth. It would need to be moist with an atmosphere that is 25 to 30 percent oxygen with scattered land and water. The perfect planet would also have plate tectonics or a similar geological process to recycle minerals and nutrients through the crust and create diverse habitats and topography. By those parameters, there are at least two dozen planets that may be more habitable than our own. These planets are a little older, a little wetter, and a little larger than Earth, and all of these factors mean they are the best places to not only one day move to, but also look for extraterrestrial life. They not only boast the right temperature and the right distance from a star, but they also have many other factors that make them a good place for life to blossom. A star of the right size and lifespan, for example. These planets are also larger. Large size means more space for landmass and habitat. A larger planet would also have higher gravity, which would make for a thicker atmosphere, something that could be beneficial for organisms that travel by flight. 
A home slightly warmer than ours would be more habitable. There would be fewer barren polar regions. It would be wetter than Earth, so we would have lesser barren deserts. It may seem counterintuitive to seek a warmer planet. After all, we are actively working on lowering temperatures here on our own planet, but that is because Earth is heating up much too quickly. Many animals are unable to adapt, and the rising sea levels affect human infrastructure. But slightly warmer climates aren't actually bad for life. A more habitable planet would look like Earth in our early Carboniferous period, which was around 359 million years ago, when much of our home had the climate of a tropical rainforest. A better version of Earth might also have a larger moon or one closer to the planet. Apart from lighting up the night sky beautifully, this would also help stabilize its orbit. The top 24 contenders our scientists have identified are over 100 light years away from us. Even with the fastest spacecraft ever built, the Voyager 1 space probe, it would still take 1,736,809 years for us to get there. The Game Plan So, what do we do? Here's the good news. Now that we have identified the planets of interest, we can now work around those planets for future observations. The beauty of our technology is that it is always evolving, and as it does, we learn at a more and more rapid pace. Right now, there is no way we can calculate an exoplanet's landmass area, but there are ways we can determine if a planet is close to what we are looking for by studying factors like the star type and the planet radius. Of the 24 planets we have identified, 9 were orbiting around a K-star, 16 fell into the correct age range, and 5 were in the right temperature range, but only one candidate, the KOI 5715.01, was truly perfect. Of course, there's no way for us to truly know the planet's true surface temperature. Factors like the greenhouse effect in its atmosphere are difficult to calculate. Luckily, the recently launched James Webb Space Telescope is an expert in analyzing atmospheres, so perhaps in the coming years we will be able to finally confirm and name KOI 5715.01 Earth 2.0. Honorable Mentions Some honorable mention is an exoplanet discovered by the Spitzer Space Telescope. TOI 700D. In a solar system with a dwarf star located over 100 light years away in the constellation Dorado, its star is 40% of the mass of the Sun and half the temperature. The star was initially misclassified in NASA's database as being more similar to our Sun, making the planets appear larger and hotter than they really are. When the researchers corrected the star's parameters, the sizes of its planets dropped, and they realized the outermost planet was about the size of Earth and in the habitable zone. Additionally, in 11 months of research, scientists learned the star does not emit flares, which improves the chances of TOI 700D being habitable and makes it easier to model its atmospheric and surface conditions. The innermost planet, TOI 700B, is almost exactly Earth size, is probably rocky, and completes an orbit every 10 days. The middle planet, TOI 700C, is 2.6 times larger than the Earth and orbits every 16 days. However, that one might be a gas-dominated planet. But TOI 700D, the outermost known planet in the system, is the only one in the habitable zone. It measures 20% larger than Earth, orbits every 37 days, and receives from its star 86% of the energy that our Sun provides Earth. We don't know the exact conditions of these planets, but we do know that they are likely tidally locked to their star, which means they rotate once per orbit, so only one side is always bathed in sunlight. The scientists at NASA have already created 20 renderings of potential environments of TOI 700D to gauge if any of them are suitable for habitation. These models examine a variety of surfaces, climates, and atmospheric conditions. One simulation included an ocean-covered TOI 700D with a dense carbon dioxide-dominated atmosphere similar to what scientists suspect surrounded Mars when it was still a new planet. The model atmosphere contains a deep layer of clouds on the star-facing side. Another model depicts the planet as a cloudless, all-land version of modern Earth, where winds flow away from the dark side of the planet and converge on the point directly facing the star. When starlight passes through it, it interacts with molecules like carbon dioxide and nitrogen to produce distinct signals called spectral lines. 
These are all, of course, speculations, but the next few decades will be a fascinating time for space exploration and exoplanet research. Each new piece of information brings us closer to finding the first evidence of life outside our solar system. Space truly is incredible, isn't it? The Kepler Space Telescope may be retired now, but the curiosity of astronomers has no end. With time, new technology will be created and answers will surely arise. We have a hundred million more years to continue to further evolve. The golden age of space exploration is still ahead of us. Who knows what more we'll discover and the places we might go.